to the angel of the church in Laodicea write, the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's creation. I know your works. You are neither cold nor hot. Would that you were either cold or hot. So because you're lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. For you say, I am rich, I have prospered, and I need nothing, not realizing that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may be rich, and white garments so that you may clothe yourself and the shame of your nakedness may not be seen, and salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline, so be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him and he with me. The one who conquers, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne, as I also conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now we're in the last of the cities of the seven churches. Yeah, we're walking on one of the main streets of Laodicea. Well, this is going to the Syrian gate, and that's oriented all the way to Pisidian Antioch, Iconium, Tarsus, and Antioch. So this is the road you would take to go east. So if you were to go through that gate and head toward that mountain, you'd even come across Colossae? Yeah, that's the next city down the road. So we've got this cluster of early churches, Colossae, Laodicea, and Hierapolis in the first century. And what about going the other way? So the west gate is the gate to Ephesus. This is the main superhighway of the ancient world. Now, everything that we're seeing is not first century. It doesn't match the time period of the road. Yeah, so there's a mixture of various periods here from Hellenistic, Roman, Byzantine. As we walk along here, I'm seeing these gaps in the pavement yeah. down the center of the street. What are those? So in these ancient cities, they ran the sewage system right underneath the, the central street. So fresh water would come in for drinking, go into the fountains, then go into the baths, and then the gray water would be used to flush out the sewage. The water system is important in Laodicea, especially considering what Jesus said through John in their letter. Yeah, we've been drinking a lot of hot drinks here, haven't we? We have, <laughs> we have, between the Turkish coffee and the chai. And in this heat, we've been drinking a lot of cold drinks. Powerade, cold water, exactly. Yeah. So uh, lukewarm really doesn't cut it. Doesn't do it? <laughs> no. <laughs> and you can really understand the image. I'm mean, gonna spit it out of our mouths, you yes. know, doing that. And, yes. And, and the behavior of the Laodiceans is prompting Jesus to use this very image. And he is really upset with his church because they've got everything they need. And he uses really ironic language here as he's speaking yeah. to them, that they're poor, blind, and naked. Here we are in a very rich banking center, wealthy city. When it was destroyed by an earthquake in AD 60, the Romans asked if they needed help, and they said, no, we can do it on our own. Mm -hmm. We're rich enough to do it. So this spirit of self-sufficiency yeah. uh, was in this city as well. And this is a noted textile center. You know, what are we seeing growing all over around here? Oh, we've seen cotton in all these fields. So uh, a city was noted for its wealth. They sent their goods all the way to Rome. Imagery here is they're naked, you know. Right. And then finally that they're blind. Uh, this is also noted as a place that a particular salve was produced to help with eye illnesses. And so these three things the church was lacking, at least spiritually. So their perception of themselves doesn't match reality. That on the outside, they think they've got it all together, that they're adopting the spirit of the city that they're living in. Absolutely. But Jesus sees them in a different light. Yep. And so in his letter, he's very stern with them. He wants them to repent and he's giving them an opportunity to humble themselves and change. Yeah, and we have this great image, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Yes. You know, and these are believers that he's, he's knocking. <laughs> Which is scary. You would think that they've already let him in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and I would think that that has a lot of application to us as believers today. Yeah. That we need to see ourselves the way that Jesus sees us yeah. and, and not be self-deceived or prideful.
Now we're rolling. Jesus references this hot and cold water. There would have been really refreshing water down at Colossae. Over at Hierapolis, you have the thermal springs. Jesus through John talks about how they're lukewarm. And just within about five or six miles on different sides of Laodicea, you had the natural hot springs here with the boiling hot water. And then at the base of one of the mountains, another few miles away, they had Colossae, which had some incredibly cold water. It looks like snow, but it's not. It is so hard and thick. These mineral deposits that the springs have been bringing up for thousands of years, he used imagery that was familiar to them and their culture and we're here at one of them. So they had these great visuals that they were familiar with that made them think of hot and cold, but Jesus is calling them lukewarm, that if they don't repent and change, he's gonna spit them out of his mouth. Jesus is not saying that hot water is better than cold water or cold water is better than hot water. He said that he wished that they were either cold or hot. He's saying, I wish that you were useful that you were one of these extremes that were beneficial and productive, not this mediocre, half-hearted in-between. They're coasting, there's no zeal, they're going through the motions, and Jesus is asking them to get off the fence. They need to re-engage and develop a passion for Christ. And I know there have been seasons in my life where I've either been on cruise control or distracted and it's easier to not be as active or zealous or passionate. And that's the challenge that Jesus is issuing to all of us, is to be mindful of that, to be aware of that, and to make sure that we re-engage and our focus is on being useful to him, not just being complacent and looking for an easy life. We're not promised an easy life, but what we've been asked to be is active for him. I'm Craig. And I'm Stu, and we're the founders of Appian Media. We really hope that you've enjoyed the content that you've just seen. This was only made available through the generous donations of so many of you. We believe that the world should have biblically accurate, visually engaging content about the Bible, and it should be free for everyone. We would encourage you to visit the membership page of appianmedia.org and consider becoming a reoccurring member. Everything that you donate to Appian Media is tax deductible. However you decide to donate, we really appreciate your support.